so sick of reality TV I'm so tired of my girlfriend ignoring me I sure could use a little bit of company Good morning everyone it's Rita Smith the number one food fairy I am in my garden just checking out the basil growing I harvested a I don't know about four cups last night a ton of basil leaves last evening um, and I'm gonna make pesto with them today I'm gonna share that process and that recipe with you and uh, I'm so happy that the basil blight appears to be over for four years I've not been able to grow um, basil over the summertime and it's been very disappointing but perhaps this year uh, you know, the, the curse is done and we're all going to be able to grow basil again. So uh, here comes the pesto. My best year I did uh, 36 batches of pesto at one shot. Maybe this year I'll be able to do that again. That'll be fantastic. So let's move into the kitchen and uh, see what's going to go on in there as far as pesto is concerned. Okay, so for the ingredients list for pesto... Um, I just wanted to quickly run through what goes into my pesto. Uh, some of it is uh, common sense, and then some of it is a bit of a surprise. Olive oil, there's no surprise. There's olive oil. I buy it in a three liter, liter can um, to get ready for summer because I'm going to make so many salads and so many dressings and so forth. So I buy olive oil in the big, um, the big bin, but you could just buy a little jar. It's okay. Extra virgin olive oil. Um, I buy store-bought uh, the Durley chopped garlic, which I find um, excellent. It's mild. I use more of it because it is mild. If you use fresh or um, heritage garlic, use less because uh, it'll be much sharper. But I use uh, heritage garlic. Uh, Parmesan cheese or Romano, uh, like whichever, uh, works for you um, or is on sale. Or, you know, it, it never gets very cheap because it's Parmesan or Romano. It's not cheap, but um, you don't use very much of it. And then, of course, salt and pepper. There's not going to be any uh, pesto without salt and pepper, so that's good. And um, we'll talk for a second about the basil, which I, this I harvested from my garden last night. If I was on top of my game, I would have harvested the basil and made the pesto like within the same hour but yeah by like eight o'clock last night it was kind of done in so i picked it stuck it in the fridge and i'm going to make uh, pesto with it today if you can grow your own basil which for the last four years i have not been able to do because there was a basil blight all basil plants were dying even professional growers told me that you just couldn't get basil but this year it looks 2016 this year it looks as though um, we're going to be able to grow basil again, which is fantastic. The plants are healthy. The plants I'm buying are verdant and lush and um, they're happy. Uh, so yeah, it looks like it could be a good basil year. Grow your own. That's the key to pesto. I know there are other kinds of pesto, but in my mind, uh, pesto needs basil. So I grow my own. Um, and if I wasn't able to do that, I would buy it from farmers, you know, uh, once you're you know, buying uh, basil at a grocery store, pesto starts to become a lot more expensive. So um, your own home grow. Now, let's talk for a second about the nuts in pesto. Um, I'm going to give you the recipe from Joy of Cooking uh, for pesto, which calls for pine nuts. It's a great recipe. You know, olive oil, parmesan, nuts, basil, salt and pepper. Um, it's a great recipe. However... Uh, I question pine nuts. Pine nuts are so expensive, so expensive. I don't know. I think if you were buying them by the pound, they would be like $40 a pound. Um, whereas I use almonds, which are about $11 a pound. Um, uh, pine nuts to me have no flavor. They're tasteless. They add fat to the recipe but they don't add any flavor. Maybe they add some texture. I would suggest to you, you could take all the money you are gonna spend on pine nuts and buy almonds or walnuts. Walnuts actually add a really tangy, sharp uh, flavor to pesto. I like walnut pesto, but just from the point of view of uh, expense and 
um, a kind of a plain flavor that everybody likes. I use almonds. I use, uh, you know, salted roasted almonds. Uh, forget the pine nuts. And uh, walnuts are interesting. I like walnuts. But um, uh, pine nuts make pesto uh, exorbitantly expensive when it does not need to be expensive. So I'm going to suggest to you throw out the idea of using pine nuts. Use almonds. Or if you like a sharp, sharp flavor, use walnuts. Um, and then, of course, everything else, the, par uh, the parmesan, the basil, the garlic, the salt, the pepper, the olive oil remains the same. But, um, nah, pine nuts. Too much money. Too much money, no flavor. Why? Like, why would you do pine nuts? Okay, so um, if you have a blender, you would put all of these ingredients through a blender. Uh, I do have a blender. However, I also have, I also have um, a KitchenAid mixer with a grinder attachment, which I find better for all of these projects. So I'm going to put everything through the KitchenAid blender, and I'm going to start with the almonds. Okay. Oh God, Ooh, that smells so good. Whoa. I'm essentially going to make these into uh, powdered almonds, which cost more if you buy them in the store. But I'm just going to run them through the blender. I will not use all of these almonds in my pesto recipe today, but I'm going to hive off a bunch of them in a Ziploc bag and refrigerate them for the next few batches. Pesto. Wow, there's quite a bit of um, quite a bit of powdered almond here, ground ground almond, I guess is what we're gonna call them. That'll be really good for the There you go. Okay. That's a bunch of almonds, which have been ground, powdered, and will be perfect for pesto. I'm gonna, I think, um, figure out how many recipes of pesto I'm making. I think I need a quarter cup per recipe, so everything else is gonna go into a Ziploc bag. Okay, let's just see how much basil I have here. Oh. I think that looks like about six, about six cups of basil, I think. About six cups of basil leaf. Um, so I'm gonna figure out from the recipe uh, how much, I think that's three batches of pesto. I think every recipe calls for two cups. So that'll be three batches of pesto. I'll uh, confirm that and then we'll come back and uh, work on that. Okay, I just ran, um, all the almonds through the KitchenAid mixer, um, that pound gave me about, I'm going to say, almost three cups. I set aside one cup for this recipe. Now I am going to run through uh, the blender, the grinder, rather, um, six cups of loosely packed basil leaves. Okay. Here they come. They're going to come out all green and liquidy. There'll be no... Uh, They'll just look all runny and green. There's really not any texture to the basil leaves when they come out of here for a pesto. Oh, I'm gonna get rid of that. Some nuts are gonna come through first. Okay. Here comes, oh my God, the smell of the basil right from the garden, it smells amazing. It comes out so compact and textured, like it's just it's too good to be true. Too good to be true. It's no wonder it only takes a teaspoon of pesto to flavor a whole pizza or, you know, a whole pot of chicken or potatoes or beans or whatever because it's so compact in flavor. Now you can do this in a blender and I have done it in a blender 
many times in the past. I just find this so much easier. Um, you could do this with a French knife if you have no blender and no mixer, no grinder. You could do this with just a French knife on a chopping board, and that would be fine. It'd probably be lovely and have some of the original texture of the um, of the basil in it. Okay. So that is, um, that's six cups of basil. I mean, it concentrates down to like a, uh, I don't know, a half of a cup of chopped up basil. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil through the mixer just to help rinse out the basil and the nuts. Okay, so we'll let that run for a second and we'll run all the basil and the nuts out. And uh, we're going to put garlic in. The, uh, the recipe calls for two tablespoons or two cloves, whoops, two cloves of garlic. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more than that because I'm using prepackaged garlic that also has oil with it, so the oil will help clean out the blender. We're going to put like quite a bit of garlic in there, okay. We'll taste it after. If it needs more, we'll add more. Okay. We're going to let that go. Okay, um, so this recipe call the joy of cooking calls for a half of a cup of Parmesan cheese. That's in. And I think um, I was going to add about two thirds of a cup of nuts or pine nuts. So I'm going to, um, I got a, a cup here. I've got most of the pine nuts there. I'm going to give that a stir. And I apologize for like the Batman episode angles of this camera. I, um, it's been so long since I shot a video. I forgot where I used to put my camera. Um, so I'm working on that. But here is, that looks pretty good. That's looking good. So we've got uh, ground nuts, garlic, um, basil, olive oil. And I'm going to taste it. Oh, look at that. Eh? Doesn't that look beautiful? There's pesto for you. I am going to um, just taste it because I haven't put any salt or pepper in yet, so I know it won't be correct. Hang on. So let me just um, have a taste of that. Okay. Definitely salt. And definitely pepper. I'm going to say... It could also use more garlic. Hmm. No. I think some more garlic. A good blob of garlic. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Stir it all up. Definitely has enough nut. Definitely has enough cheese. So I'm happy with that. Oh, look at it all beautiful and green. Oh my gosh. Um, I could be doing a couple of batches a week, I think. You know, I could probably do two batches a week for like the next eight weeks. That's 16 batches of uh, pesto. My daughter, Johanna, has mentioned to me that when I package it in half cup portions, that is too much, and that I should package it instead in quarter cup portions. Hmm. That's good. Okay, that's better. Yeah, I needed more garlic. I could do it in quarter cup portions. By the time you get to portions that small, I would almost say you could freeze it in ice cube trays. Like you could put it in an ice cube tray, freeze it, and then pop the cubes out into a Ziploc bag so that if you were cooking potatoes or green beans or um, pasta, <coughs> pizza, whatever, and you felt that you would like to add some pesto to the recipe, like a, an ice cube of pesto would probably be enough. You don't need that much. It's so rich. 
It's so rich with the cheese and the nuts and the uh, tons of basil. It's so rich that you don't need very much of it at all. And it is a real shame to waste it. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll do this in an ice cube tray. Maybe I'll do it in an ice cube tray and, and freeze them in cubes and see how it goes. Otherwise, I'll do them in Ziploc bags of a quarter cup. I haven't figured it out yet, but um, I'll be back to let you know what I decided. Welcome back. I did, in fact, decide to... Uh, I'm going to freeze these in ice cube trays. I'm going to freeze this pesto in ice cube trays because uh, that's about the portion um, that we need for a recipe, you know. Uh, so I'm going to... I, what I did was I took a little uh, paper towel with some olive oil on it and I um, wiped the trays uh, each each little compartment of a tray so that um, the pesto won't stick too much. It'll stick a little bit, but I'll give it a twist and out it will come from the trays. I'm going to freeze this. Once it is in fact frozen, I'm going to twist it and pop it out and put the cubes in a Ziploc bag. Whoopsie doodles. Um, put the cubes in a Ziploc bag. And then uh, I'll show you actually uh, one of my favorite recipes to do with uh, boiled potatoes. You just pop one out and let it thaw and mix it in with um, mix it in with uh, whatever it is that you're preparing, whether it's pasta or vegetables or uh, to thaw and put on pita bread or pizza. I also um, uh, I also at times uh, take just a small amount of pesto. And mix it with mayonnaise to make a dip um, or a spread for some kind of bread or pizza or whatever it is that we're making. So I'm trying to make these equal if I can, as equal as I can make them. There you go. So there are 12 little pasta soldiers uh, that are going to be good in some recipes sometime soon. I'm going to freeze them, uh, pop them out, and... Uh, and uh, use them to make whatever it is that we're eating. So there you go, 12 portions uh, of pesto. I'm so sick of reality TV I'm so tired of my girlfriend ignoring me I sure could use a little bit of company Some time away from all the wannabe celebrities Cause I wanna get outside